What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Along with the new versions of the various flavors of Ubuntu, the latest version of the Farron OS released recently as well, and I've never tried this distro so I figured I might as well make a video about it. And so, all I know is that, at least I think I know that it's based off of Linux Mint, and that it's using the a customized version of the Cinnamon desktop environment. And let's take a look at some details here. So here it is, also the kernel version and whatnot. So I'm not sure uh, what's new about this ISO in comparison to the previous one. Um, I don't know, apart from maybe stability and package updates and whatnot, I'm not sure. But uh, for those of you who've never seen this OS, you know, I think, and for me as well, I've never really used it. I think this is uh, going to be kind of like a quick overview and tour of what it has to offer. And uh, just right from the start looking at it, I really like the wallpaper. It's got its logo and name here and also for the start menu icon as well. Now, when you take a look at it, really, it's pretty reminiscent of Windows, you know, uh, the kind of taskbar here with the icons and, and the little menu uh, and then over here for the system tray icons and that's pretty cool is um, this arrow right here you don't even have to click on it you can just hover over it you know you have your notifications sound you know typical stuff but um, and your user and it's really cool what this seems to be um, a, like a screen recorder which is pretty cool so you can take a screenshot and you can even uh, record the screen. So this is actually very useful in my opinion. Um, let's just take a quick screenshot, see how it looks. So that's pretty cool, that's very neat. And then you have kind of like a desktop widget right here. You have the time. So this is really nice. You know, my first impressions, I'm definitely really liking this so far. Um, and then you even have a customize option. So. I'm assuming this is for the icons, the desktop itself. And let's see. I think I think Cinnamon has its own setting uh, for the widgets. So let's see what other wallpapers it has to offer. So there's some nice Oh this is pretty cool. There's definitely some nice uh, minimal wallpapers here that are very nice. And also, I believe the transparency of the panel is dynamic, I think. I remember watching a video. So there, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of wallpapers here, but I'm just going to stick to the default. I do think I remember watching a video showcasing the uh, dynamic uh, panel changing, you know, its transparency depending on the wallpaper. Um, I'm not sure if that's still here. I'm not sure if it's it, an actual option. Um, let's see what this. Okay, so the name is kind of different. Instead of widgets, they're called desklets. So right here it has the clock one enabled by default. I remember using Cinnamon a while ago. Um, you can even download other ones. Um, but of course, I'm using this on a virtual machine. I don't have it installed, so I haven't... Um, I'm not going to update it. But this is this is pretty neat, you know. You have these ones by default and then uh, you can uh, download other ones if you want as well. Um, there's also a themes here. Probably can direct you to the theme settings. So this is the default layout. So there's a, a dark mode. Okay, so it's giving a message here. Hopefully the virtual machine doesn't crash or anything. All right, so the theme has successfully applied. It kind of uh, took a while. The desktop kind of froze for a second there, but uh, if we open up the file manager, we can see here, which by the way, um, let's see how we can access the menu. There we go. This is uh, Nemo, I assume, yep. So this is Nemo. And then you have your options here to, you know, kind of adjust it. So I think it looks nice. I think the dark theme is nice. The one thing that kind of sucks, though, is that it takes some time. But 
Uh, you could just take a look at these, you know, there's uh, Windows, Windows 10, Windows Vista, XP, 7, 8, even a Mac OS type layout. It would be pretty interesting to kind of give these a try. You know what, I'm going to give one more a try. I want to see the, uh, the OS X layout. Let's take a look at that. Alright, so there you have it. This is the OS X layout and uh, here we have the icons. Now, I'm not sure why they're kind of glitched up here. Um, Maybe it's because I'm a, I'm using a virtual machine, um, but this is pretty nice. You know, you have your buttons here on the left, you have the panel at the top, and then your dock at the bottom, which I'm assuming it's using Plink. Um, and then if you want to kind of create your own style here, you can uh, adjust everything separately. So I think that you know you can definitely tell that uh, this is. Uh, the idea in mind is is to have um, you know a, a friendly user experience and definitely uh, it, it appeals to beginners because uh, you know those who are coming from either Windows or Mac they can kind of um, they have their themes already set um, you know and configured so all they have to do is with the click of the button with a, the click of a button, they can just uh, get a famil familiar layout, so that's pretty nice. Um, so, in terms of performance and stability, I'm not too sure how this does uh, because I haven't installed it. Um, but in terms of resources, uh, so it's using about a gigabyte of RAM. Um, but it's it is smooth though, you know. Um, Especially for a virtual machine, I, I do think that it, the performance is pretty good. Um, so let's take a look at... So apparently it has a store. So there it is. So let's take a look at the store real quick. So there it is. You have the store. And let's take a look at Sublime Text. I really like that text editor. Let's see if it has it. Yep, so there it is. And also flat packs are included here. Um, I did take a quick look before the video, it did have some uh, good options. Um, I think it was this software sources, so you can change the mirrors and whatnot. Um, so you know, that's that's always good to have. Um, and so for the default applications, let's take a look at all of them. So I'm not gonna go through them one by one, but from what you can see, you know, has the typical essential applications and of course they're categorized as well um, you know the file manager text editor gparted it even has Krita that's nice I think it's nice I, I'm not sure if it would appeal to everyone um, now let's see if it has GIMP as well it doesn't so that's interesting usually most uh, distros come with um, GIMP instead then we have LibreOffice as well. And also another thing that I noticed was uh, for the default browser, let's see if it has Firefox, nope, or Chromium maybe. Yeah, so the default browser is Vivaldi. I've used Vivaldi, I actually still use it on my other system, but um, it's a good browser. It offers a lot of customization, so I think it's it's really good. Um, a bit more on the heavier side, but it's it's an interesting choice, you know. Both Krita and the web browser are both interesting choices. All right, so that was just a really quick overview. Um, based off of my first impressions, I really like it. You know, um, I think it's geared towards new users you know people who are who are maybe coming from windows or uh, mac but of course you know if you're a long time linux user that wouldn't stop you from using it um, i think it it's definitely nice it's uh, appealing it has a lot of pre-installed applications and it i'm not sure like i said before i'm not sure how stable it is and all that type of stuff but um you know i i think you should definitely try it out uh the one thing I think it's missing is blur that would definitely um, add to the appeal, uh, but it all already looks pretty nice.
but of course cinnamon doesn't have blur yet so um, but yeah so that was basically it uh, thanks for watching